What is up everybody? Josh here again and today we have an Icarus Week 50 update. This week they announced Dynamic Quest and we explained this device sitting right next to me. They also make some huge performance increases to the game, some news about the next DLC, and we have some bug fixes and changes. Let's get into it, shall we? Icarus Week 50 Update Open World Number 2 Icarus Week 50 Update Open World Mode gets dynamic missions. They've added 8 dynamic open world missions along with our RVT performance improvements and new bug reporting tools. Our initial implementation of Open World has been well received and we are excited to follow this up with the addition of dynamic quests to Open World sessions together with some performance improvements. These Open World missions allow us to bring a richer experience directly to our Persistent World experience. Inside an Open World session you can now launch special missions from a short range radio in your base. Eight mission types and variations depending on your biome and difficulty give you over 50 different versions to play. Performance improvements to reduce the impact of Unreal Engine RVT tech has been implemented that can now increase performance significantly for many players. Also introduced a new bug reporting feature, which helps provide more detailed bug information to help us solve and challenging bugs such as disappearing deployables and voxels upon reload. Finally, they talk a little bit more about upcoming decentralization and why it's so important after an outage they experienced early this week. So this week adds open world missions, establishes open world mode has allowed them to expand the game into a more persistent experience this week they're bringing the dynamic missions to open world mode and the missions vary as far as the objectives and challenges that can be launched from your open world session there's variations based on your map location biome and selected difficulty you can now make the short range radio from the crafting bench after unlocking it in the blueprint tree and it requires 10 wood 8 ropes and 15 iron once you craft and deploy it you can engage with it and it'll provide two contracts to choose between with any you select being repeatable in the future there are eight types of missions available now you have hunt which kills a quota of wild animals that spawn in the current biome grow which you have to grow vegetables and deliver them mine collect a quota of requested ore and deliver collect search for down prospectors and collect and deliver their ids scan a location with a scanner and defend the scanner cache which is collect a cache from a previous prospector bosses kill a wandering boss animal and tools being craft and deliver three tools of varying tech types completion of the assigned mission will result in a reward pod descending to your location where you can choose between one of the three offered rewards and be granted xp for your efforts the missions differ from the ones that's in the missions game mode so don't forget to play them especially if you want to unlock boss enemies items or find exotics in the future they're looking at ways to integrate the rich mission experience of the base game with open world mode while still having some unique standalone missions they have experienced three months of back-to-back -back growth in player numbers revenue and playtime much of which was driven by open world mode. As such, it's clear the players enjoy this and our community and many content creators have provided excellent advice for us on how to focus the experience. As such, we'll be expanding and developing open world mode based on your feedback. Please continue to let us know your thoughts and the deals how to develop this further. So they go on to talk about the performance increase. Guys, I honestly have a huge performance increase seems. My wife feels the same whenever I'm hosting and I actually doesn't feel like it's real boggy anymore. Comment in the comments down below if you actually have played and have some kind of performance increase i'd like to know how many of you guys actually do notice an increase because i have but they did implement the performance improvement that they talked about last week with early indications saying that they're positive improvements and mid low spec players and they explain how rvt technology and the changes they made should help with the bottleneck on the gpu they substantially ease the strain caused by that bottleneck improving performance and especially fps they go on to state how they experimented with this in the experimental branch with testers earlier this week and what some of the frames they got on that experimental branch. So hopefully everybody has an increase in FPS. They go on to say that they are working on FPS even though they have some comments like why aren't they working on performance first and explain that they have a whole team dedicated to working on performance. And also this week, they added a new option called bug tracking. They wanted to address one of the larger bugs impacting the games currently, and due to its unique circumstances, it made it difficult for them to fix. Such things as disappearing buildings, deployables, and deep ore veins was one of the things that was plaguing players for some time. They've added a new report bug option in the game that allows you to anonymously send bug tickets to their devs, which include many errors and warnings that have occurred in the logs. If you lose any buildings or deployables, please hit escape and use the report 
important issue, but the feature upload is still active and you can still use it for best sharing suggestions, improvements, thoughts, and concerns. I'll show you guys the bug tracking here in game very shortly. And they go on to talk about data decentralization again this week. As I mentioned, they are working on removing the game's online requirement and dependence on their servers and architecture. And Dean goes on to say how decentralizing the game and its architecture allows for the community to run the game how they see fit and ensures the game's long life independent of the studio running it. Hmm. And they go on to explain about earlier this week how they had a significant outage with players unable to connect and them even considering bringing this change forward, but they're making good progress and it should be here shortly. So they're saying that they're working with server providers who have been testing the dedicated server and are providing useful feedback. If anyone's interested in trying the branch, they update throughout the week and talk about bugs and issues in their Discord and the data decentralization branch channel. This work really will open up doors to them adding a lot of things in the game, including significantly expanding the number of players who can play in a session at once. So their DLC status, update, and monetization stance. Icarus is one of the first titles in the studio that they have produced, and it's fair to say that their launch was rocky. With the launch, they undertook a review of how they were working and made adjustments as well as some of the key decisions. One commitment they made was to work on the quality of the base game and customer satisfaction before they looked at monetization. They originally had plans for more additional monetization, such as DLC, including more expansions, but have more moral obligations to monetizing the project while reception was deservedly mixed. Instead of this, they committed to weekly updates even through holiday periods to build customer and player confidence to allow them time to develop the experience. As such, they were not at the point where they felt comfortable releasing a paid DLC, as they feel there is some work to be done getting the base game to an experience players are satisfied with. To ease the production process, they do publish their change logs verbatim, so keen eyes have noticed that we have been doing a lot of work on future DLC content for some time, and we are mostly there in a number of aspects but i will continue to delay the launch of dlc until they are satisfied that the base game is broadly representative of what our players want and expect even when they do launch the future dlc they will continue to prioritize development of the base game and have dlc being supportive content additionally the studio is committed to ensuring dlc does not divide the community such as when playing with friends they currently do not have a date for the dlc and content. They will continue to listen to your comments and discuss it with you here and on their Discord. Dean Hall, CEO. And they go on to say, like our work, please consider supporting our other game like Stationeers. So before we get on to the change log, we're going to go ahead and show you guys real quick all the changes that we had mentioned before. So the first thing we're going to mention here is the report an issue. Uh, so now whenever you hit escape, you'll see an option here for report an issue. And all you got to do is type in what your issue is. So it says sending this bug report will include relevant anonymous user data to help us track down the issue and then hit send report. So the next thing we're going to show you guys is on tier two and it's the short range radio. Interact to receive a mission from SMPL3 Simplified Mission Prospector Liaison, version 3. It can be crafted at the crafting bench for 10 wood, 8 rope, and 15 iron ignits. Once crafted, you get to place it wherever you want. And actually, you could pick it up and move it and put it wherever you want to. Once you have it, you can hit E and select which mission you want to do. Depending on your area, your difficulty, and biome, you'll see a certain type of mission here. We have two missions. We have a grow some crops to deliver to the UDA and a simple hidden cache mission. Find a cache within the area left behind by other prospectors. We'll check that one out for you guys. And as you see on the map, we will have a location we can go and search for the missing supplies. Uh, it looks like my cache kind of just spawned in front of the base here. Oh, look, and here's a bunch of grilled pumpkins and stuff. And that's mission complete. So now we can go back to the short range radio and choose a new mission. Here's one for hunt. Hunt some nearby creatures in the current area to make the area safe for other prospectors. Or we have a medium collection. Find the bodies of a prospector team killed while on Icarus and deliver their IDs to the UDA. We'll do the hunt. And as you can see on this mission, we have to hunt 40 wolves. 
for time's sake i'm not going to do that but just wanted to show you guys how the missions are we're going to be doing these missions and we're going to have two icarus streams this week join us if you will friday and saturday at nine o'clock p.m we'll be streaming open world both of those days and we're going to be doing a lot of these missions too in different locations and biomes and we got the change log for this week guys we're gonna go through and just give you some of the most important things that we find in the change log under the new content this week other than mentioning all about the dynamic quests that's what we have in the very first part here they mentioned the update of the exotic delivery interface to have its own widget and not use the mission communicator bp they added a rudimentary flare to the reward pod which fires in the air upon landing basically on any mission that you could choose your reward uh, a drop pod will drop down and you could see that drop pod and choose your reward so a flare will shoot up where that drop pod drops they did add an auto detect gpu button to the graphics settings and auto detect button to the graphics settings and that's really it as far as i could see on the changes and the updates just basically they mention how they put in all the quests and missions all eight missions into the dynamic missions category and how they updated them so this week on fixed water pumps will no longer automatically increase the water levels in the water trough grenades don't damage structures or deployables and grenades and sand words pit will now damage buildings and deployables twice and melee damage can now damage buildables and deployables. They've also added an auto tech button in the graphic settings in the fix section too. And this week in the future content section, talking a little bit about the bricks and the sledgehammer. Talk about the Sanal skins and variations, textures, and material. Could be different ones of those. And about the volcanic stuffs. Talk about clay, obsidian, and scoria. They added burnt versions to all versions of the aspen trees. I was actually able to get a picture of what the aspen trees look like. Not going to spoil it for everybody, but join our Discord, guys. If you want to see the pictures, message me in our Discord, and I'll send them to you. I got some data mine photos from the game that Twist from Icarus's Discord gave me, so if you want to take a look at that, just message me in the Discord. There's a lot of cool stuff coming to Icarus. Talking about the Predator Bird. Talking about shield mechanics. Uh, shields now work on Quick Bar rather than the G slot. The list of items based on tags can be used to shield and an offhand. Nice. Looks like they buffed stamina and health granted by soups. Added the first implementation of the back dog stalking behavior. Ooh, and a new volcanic template cave. Talking again about shield focusing. There might be some kind of shield and other offhand items in the game soon, guys. From the futures here. Repair bench implementation. And again, about the sh wooden shield. It looks like we're going to have a wooden shield sometime soon. And other than added base setup for spider aspects to the project, haven't really seen anything else in the change log this week. So guys, that's it for this week. Don't forget, if you like what you see, to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And share the video. Yeah. I don't think I've ever asked you guys to share our videos. Uh, we are nearing 1,000 subscribers, and we're trying to get to 1,000 by the end of the year, which we may or may not hit. But if we don't, that's okay. It's just good to have goals. We also have a Cash App, guys, on the channel. It's located on the home page. If you're interested in supporting the channel, we'll take the money and we'll put it towards hardware upgrades and stuff like that for the videos and for the streams and for future content and future games. So thank you guys for watching and hopefully we'll see you next time. Peace.